How on earth did we just win that game? How on earth did we come out of that with three points? Who knows, but I'm just glad that we did. There's so much to dissect from that game. There's so much for United to work on over the next few weeks. Ten Hag has such a massive job on his hands now. A lot of those pre-season issues creeped into this game. Wolves took full advantage of it. They deserve to get someone out of it. There's no doubt about it. But that's just football sometimes. We've got to take the three points and just run. These games up against Wolves never seem to be fun. I don't know what it is about them, but they seem to turn it on for United. So many of their players were just cutting through United's midfield with ease. And United just about managed to hang on. I thought we had a couple of decent performances, but overall, very, very shaky. Just the technical level of these players wasn't there. And there was a couple of tactical issues as well that I'm going to talk about in the video today, you guys. But as always, I'm going to go through my talking points. Drop a like if you enjoy, subscribe if you're new around here, and let's get into it. But first up, guys, going to start off with the positives. There wasn't really many of them, but I'm going to start off. My man of the match was Rafael Varane. He got that all-important goal up against Wolves in the right position for that one. But I thought his defensive work was really very much needed in this game as well. Whenever the Wolves players were cutting through the United midfield with ease, Varane was often a calming presence in that back line, able to sweep up and obviously stop a lot of the damage happening to our own goal. I think a lot of the times when the ball was coming into United's box, he was the one dealing with it. I think without his defensive work, United would have really um, struggled even more in this game. Other solid performances I thought was Onana. Despite that bit of a hairy challenge in the last couple of minutes, I thought he had a very good game. Solid debut from him. wan had some very decent moments. Obviously created that goal as well for United. Sancho as well when he came on was very good. Going to talk a bit more about him later on in the video. But that's pretty much it, guys. The rest of them, the technical quality just wasn't there at all. So many misplaced passes. It was such a frustrating game to watch. Obviously, this United team can only really get better from this now. That's the one saving grace from it. And next up, guys, going to talk a bit more about the tactical issues I fought during this game. And I've highlighted Mount in this one. Obviously, he did struggle on his United debut. But it wasn't just him. And I think the way United set up in this game just led the whole midfield to struggle, really. The way Mount and Fernandes were pressed up so high when, um, obviously, United had the ball... It just led to there being too many gaps in that midfield. We were too predictable trying to play out of defence. Trying to get the ball into Mount and Fernandes just didn't work. One of them had to drop deeper and help out that midfield and the defence to try and progress this game forward. There was too many United players just stood still when we had possession. Similar problems to what we had last year. Except last year we had Christian Eriksen a lot of the time in this team. Dropping into deeper areas, trying to progress the ball then. We really did miss that. And I thought when Eriksen came on, I think he created that little bit more of a balance in our midfield because he was the one dropping deeper at times. United now, Ten Hag, we need to learn how to play a little bit better with this team. There's going to be so many more question marks about this Bruno, Mount and Casemiro midfield because this game didn't quash any of those doubts that we had going into it. And thirdly, guys, I've mentioned the issues United had in possession, but out of possession, it was pretty much just as bad. I've highlighted Casemiro here because for me, I just really feel sorry for him. He had so many Wolves players just running directly at him. He didn't have his best game, there's no doubt about it. But I did feel sorry for him the way he just lacked any sort of support. With Mount and Fernandes pushed on so much, they couldn't really help um, Casemiro out to possession then. So he was left on his own to deal with so many midfield runners. The Wolves midfield was very direct and they did play very well. Casemiro was off it a little bit. A lot of the lunging challenges that he was trying to make were just miles off. He needs to improve his game, but I did feel sorry for him. The way United just opened out that midfield and just left him in there on his own. That needs to be addressed because out of possession, that transition defence from United was nowhere near good enough. Wolves could have easily had three or four goals, on, at least on the counter-attack in this game. And teams are going to know that against United coming up in the next few games now. So we really need to sort that out. It was a question mark going into this game. And this game, uh, once again, just did nothing to quash all those uh, doubts that we had. Similar to the stuff in possession, out of possession, United weren't any better. And my penultimate point, guys, is going to be surrounding Marcus Rashford and the struggles yet again that he has up front. For me, I just don't see Rashford as a long-term striker solution. I noted in the video that i done recently that I've got major doubts about him in that position. 
He's so much better coming in off the left-hand side. I think the one bright bit of play that he had in this game was when he was managed to come in off that left-hand side. He still does very much similar things. He tries to cut in on that right foot. He tries to run direct to the defence. But when he's playing as that striker, then there's so many more defenders around him and he finds it so much harder to get any space. Like, for me, it would have been better off if we managed to get him on that wing somehow, play Sancho as a false nine from the start, something that we tried doing in pre-season. But we need to work out what's best now for this team going forward because having him as a striker is just not really working for me. And then out of possession, he doesn't really work hard enough either. When the ball's coming in, there's those 50-50 duels. Rashford just doesn't really want to know. He doesn't get involved in half of them. Any aerial ball coming in is absolutely pathetic from him half the time. He doesn't even challenge the Wolves defenders. So for me, going forward, it's going to be a very much a struggle if we're going to be relying on him as our main centre forward. And that's the major doubt I got about this United team long term. I'm sure the Ten Hag will work out the midfield because we're going to have options in there. Especially if we sign the likes of Amrabat, we've got more options going forward. But in that striker spot, we know we've got Rashford, Martial and Hoyland. Maybe Sancho as a false nine you can count as well. But Hoyland's a very young player. You can't rely on him straight away. But I do think he's going to give us more of a presence than Rashford would. Martial, that injury-prone player who shows up kind of whenever he wants to. That striker spot for United, I really do worry about this. It's not just about getting goals. It's providing a real presence in that team. We always compare everyone to Haaland, but you see the levels the City have gone to by having that big presence up front. United are completely missing that at the minute. And lastly, guys, going to end it on a bit of a positive note. And that was going to be Jadon Sancho's cameo at the end of that game. I thought he really did come on with that energy and that presence to try and get United going and try and provide that bit of a spark. And he did that for large parts. Obviously, he only had that last sort of 25 minutes to work in. But I thought he was everywhere in that front line and his attacking play was really good. The bad part about Jadon Sancho's game is when he's on that left-hand side, he just simply doesn't track his full-back. Time and time again, Wolves were getting down that right-hand side. They were getting at Luke Shaw. He had numbers of um, Wolves players to try and deal with. And I felt bad for him at the end of that game. And that's why Ten Hag made that switch to put Sancho up front and then to get Fernandes out on this left-hand side to provide more cover there. Like, for me, Jadon Sancho, I don't really see him as a false nine. If, but if he's going to be a winger for this United team, yes, it's great. You've got that forward side of your game and he came on and provided that bit of a spark. But you've got to know you've got to do the defensive side of your game as well. You can't just completely leave that out because we can't have any passengers when we're trying to defend. You need to defend as a team, no matter who you are. You No one's more um, above doing those defensive duties. That's going to be the bad side of it for me. So there we are, guys. I think I really need to dissect this game in a little bit more detail. Probably going to come out with a more of a tactical analysis video surrounding those issues that United had in and out of possession in the game and the tactics that Ten Hag tried to use. Stay tuned for that one. Make sure you subscribed. But honestly, guys, after this one, it's just taking the three points and run. We've got to be so much better up against Spurs on Saturday now. That's going to be United's next game away from home. I'm sure we will be because to try and be that bad again, I don't think United even manage it. The amount of time, I want to see what the pass actually was from this United team because it probably was absolutely abysmal. But as I've said, guys, take the three points and run. Stay tuned to Welsh Red TV for all the latest analysis and everything United. I'll see you in the next one.